HR issues can kill you. One complaint against your company can turn your world upside down. And you spend way too much time dealing with HR when you should be spending your time on making a profit. You should talk to Bambi. With Bambi, get access to your own dedicated U.S.-based HR manager starting at just $99 per month. They get to know you and your business while providing HR expertise and the personal touch you need and want. They're available by phone, email, and real-time chat, so onboarding and terminations run smoothly. Team members reach peak performance, and your business stays compliant with changing HR regulations. And with Bambi's HR Autopilot, you'll automate important HR practices like setting policies, training, and feedback. HR managers can easily cost 80 grand a year, but Bambi starts at $99 per month. Schedule your free conversation today to see how much Bambi can take off your plate. Go to Bambi.com right now and type in Accelerate under podcast when you sign up. It'll really help the show. Spelled BAM, B-E-E dot com. Bambi.com. Type in Accelerate. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. Oh, that's a cheer we used to do in softball. Uh, what? It's uh, actually Geico. Whenever someone hit a triple, we would wave our bats and yell, 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. But we never got to use it because we would only hit home runs. Annoying. The phrase is from Geico because they help save people money. Geico? Yeah, they were our team sponsor. Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. Welcome to Accelerate Your Business Growth with your host, Diane Helbig. Diane is a leading small business development and leadership coach, author, and speaker who is passionate about sharing valuable ideas, tips, and techniques with business professionals worldwide. Diane brings you the world's experts and gurus in all things business, whether it's sales, structure, social media, planning, or plateauing, guests bring their expertise and energy to each episode. When growing your business is your focus, Accelerate Your Business Growth is the show to listen to. Got a topic or guest suggestion? Let Diane know. The goal is to make sure you have the information you need to move your business forward. Thanks for joining us. Settle in and enjoy. Hey, everybody. Thanks so much for joining me. Today's podcast is sponsored by audible.com and we're offering you a free trial. You can go to audibletrial.com slash business growth, sign up for that trial, and then, you know, make sure you check out the audiobooks, but also check out the other content that is there for your enjoyment. The Accelerate Your Business Growth podcast continues to enjoy inclusion on lists of the best podcasts to listen to. And that's been happening um, over several years, and I'm tremendously grateful for that. Uh, And it's really due to the guests. These are folks who have expertise in particular areas of business, and they join me for a conversation where they share their expertise with all of you. Today is no different. My guests today are Catherine and Michael Redman. Catherine and Michael are on a mission to help business owners create a great business while also protecting their relationships and health. It can be done, they say, and they're going to tell us how today. They're also the authors of the book, Fulfilled. Thanks so much for joining me today, guys. We are so happy to be here. Oh, thank you for having us. This is going to be fun. <laughs> it is going to be fun. And we are going to jump right in because I am I have so many questions. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so many so questions, many. so little time. Uh, but my first one is around the pandemic. So we are recording this about 10 months into the great pandemic, so to speak. And it seems like it's led a lot of people to start their own businesses instead of, you know, going out and trying to fu- get a new traditional job with a stable company. Um and, and I'm curious what your take is on that. 
That's a good question. And it's really an interesting thing because it, in times like this, it's, it's almost a dual edged sword. Uh, you have these great opportunities that happen in moments like this moments that are um, full of tension and full of, of challenges and everything else. There's lots of windows that open up. I mean, digital marketing and sales online, um, they have been steadily increasing over the last 10 years, but they just took a huge swipe up. I mean, they grew faster than anybody expected. So there was lots of opportunities uh, for a lot of the companies that are already established, but for people to find niches and places like that. The other thing that we that we see on that on the on the challenging side is there's a lot of people who are um, jumping in because they think there's an opportunity, but they haven't thought through it. They some people have had what we call an entrepreneurial seizure. <laughs> where they, I can do this. Uh, my boss is making money. I do this all day long. I can go do this. And, and there's these people that are jumping into it also that they may or may not see an opportunity, but they don't have any experience in running a business. They don't realize what's going on and all the skills they need to develop. So we, we're really uh, bullish, if you will. <laughs> we're optimistic in the midst of it for people, but there is a, a very large caveat warning in this time with all this uh, disruption, you've got to learn how to run a business well and work on your business and in your business, or you will fail because the business ah. failure is 90%. And it's just, you. we don't want people to take their dreams and be crushed. So we're here cheering them on, but we've brought up a, a process of going, this is how you learn those skills and everything. And that's partially what we brought into our book is, is those skills together so you can holistically think about a business. Yeah. And it makes so much sense that, you know, what used to feel stable, even the people who felt yeah. stable in their stable jobs and their stable companies, suddenly yeah. there's zero stability. So the idea that people would be looking at what is an alternative and, and, and maybe I can be the captain of my own ship. And those things all completely make sense. It's just, if you're going to be the captain of your own ship, um, there are some tools you need to bring on board or you may get out there a ways and then find yourself sinking. So we want you to beat the odds, beat the failure odds and beat those odds of disengagement. The basically the, I've got a business, but I hate it. it yeah. And I'm, I'm miserable than I was when yeah. I started. I thought this would be great. It sucks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're laughing because we talk about like we hate the idea of business sucking the life out of you that's one of the things that um that we talk about is we stand against you know businesses that suck the life out of you so right because boy what is worse than that you do this thing you're all excited about it, it you, you have something hopefully that you're passionate about or you know that you've made this decision this decision and then you get into it and it's not what you thought it was going to be and it's got some challenges and then you don't even want to get out of bed in the morning right uh, uh, and there's nothing worse worse than a you don't you don't like going to work and plus you don't even like getting up in the morning because you hate it and i mean we hit a yeah. place in business early on like we're i think we're we were like six years in we'd been in a while and um but we hit a place in our business where quite literally diane we did not want to cross the threshold on monday morning we hated it. And it was during a season where we were experiencing, like we'd experienced like 400% growth. So wow. it wasn't like, it wasn't like there wasn't money and we were dying on that vine, but we were dying on the, I have lost the plot and I don't even know why I'm doing this anymore. And I don't like who I'm working with. And I just don't want to come to work anymore. <laughs> so wow. we have been in that place, um, which is part of, you know, the passion. Yeah for us is like, what does it look like to have good cash flow, have provision, but also wow. not lose your passion for what you're doing? How do you do that? Right. So, yeah. Right. So we started and, and, with goal and then we failed and then we turned around and tried to unfail. <laughs> <laughs> it's not failure. It's learning. Let, let's be clear, right? This, you don't fail as long as you learn something, which it sounds like you did. And, um, and I'm really grateful that you talked about people going into business, but not knowing how to own or run a business. That, that is a, a, a huge gap, but I'm wondering, um, are, th are there mistakes that you see new entrepreneurs make that, that just makes things so much more difficult than they need to be? Oh yeah. yeah. Matter of fact, there's uh, 
two big ones that we see on a regular basis. That's like, if you're going to start somewhere, start with these two things. And the first one is having a, what we call a clear, complete and compelling vision. Vision's one of those vague words. We call them fuzzy words. It's like you, you could have 10 people in the room and they'd all say they agree that, but they don't, they don't all define it the same way. So we're defining vision as a complete vision that has a clear purpose statement, clear core values of how you're going to behave. And then a really big goal that's maybe even 10 years out, like something big you'd like to dream to get. And then you can put your strategic plans together to get there someday and to move towards that. But that vision, it's amazing how many companies, even ones that are out there that are successful, but they've hit a ceiling, they don't have a clear, complete and compelling vision. And that's the first one. The second one, Catherine, yeah. Um, the second one is that most new entrepreneurs don't have, and we mentioned this already a little bit, but don't have a holistic business model. So they're really good at, you know, one or two things, but they don't like, they don't know how to hire. They don't know how to identify who a good employee would be or not a good employee. They don't know how to set up maybe operations and systems. And then a very big one, especially for small businesses is they're scared to death of the finance piece of it. They don't understand money and culture and, or the money piece of it and how to read their reports and all that kind of stuff. Right. So there's all of these there's sort of components, you know, six of them that we write in our, in oh, our yeah. book and, and they just, they don't have a model for thinking big picture about what the entirety of a business is. They just know what they're good at. So, so they tend to sort of fall apart in the places where they just have no competence and no, not, and sometimes not even an understanding that they need to have competence, especially in the early days. So when you jump back and you look at this, it really gives business people a huge head start, especially startups, but even people who want to go from wherever they are to the next level and they keep hitting that ceiling is really going, I need to make sure I know where I'm going and who I am and what I do and who, what I don't do or who I don't serve. If that identity and direction is set, and then you actually have a business model that you can kind of use as that template or that check mark, that checklist, like a pilot would have in an airplane, you know, you're going through and going, okay, check, 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 check. Okay. We can take off now. The success rate is way higher. Yeah. I mean, we were having a conversation this morning in a um, group that we're a part of that's talking about how you scale business. And one of the things that I said that, that made me smile because we're not very good at this, especially early in our businesses, is really defining what you're good at and what you're not good at. So that when somebody comes to you and you're hungry for money, but you actually don't have a lot of competence in that thing, it's just adjacent to what you do, you probably should say no. Right. So he used the example of like, we're really good at buying ads and, and driving traffic, for example, but we're not SEO people. So when somebody comes to us and wants to grow their search engine optimization, that is not a skill set. And we had to learn that the hard way by taking on a couple of those clients and not doing well. So that's, you know, just one component is like identifying what, what am I actually good at? What is my team good at? And what are we not good at that we need to put aside? Yeah. Yeah, I think that that is huge. And and I, boy, you see so many companies doing it. They either want to be all things to all people or they feel like they don't want to walk away from revenue or they can't walk away from revenue and they don't realize that that's not serving their business, taking on that piece of business because if they don't do it well, it hurts their reputation. Uh, if it's the wrong kind of client, it it creates that situation where you don't want to get out of bed. Because, yeah. you know, you can't stand doing it, right? And it keeps them from bringing in the good clients because they're busy spending their time over here with something they shouldn't be doing. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And as, and as leaders, especially small business leaders, we've got, we're very self-confident people we are. And we believe we can conquer the moon and the stars and put them in our back pocket. And we're going to try, darn it, whether, <laughs> whether we learn a lot of lessons in the process or not. <laughs> Yeah, but you know, one of the things that we always, that we end up talking to leaders when you get into that quiet room more often than not late at night uh, in a quiet conversation over a drink or something is the fear factor. And, and we make a lot of those decisions because we get really nervous or scared that something that it should happen, couldn't happen. And so we, we settle for other things just because of the fear. And it's something that you've got to work on that inner game as a leader. You've got to. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, you have to have that. Um, 
it's sort of a leap of faith, right? You just, you have to have that faith that if you focus on what you should be focusing on and where you're meant to be, that's what's going to happen. Yes. Yes, absolutely. And the best, you know, there's this whole dynamic of, okay, how do you know you're in the right spot? Well, having a team around you and not being a lone ranger is a really good place to start. Yeah. Even if it's a non just like people who know and care about you and can speak into your life, or if you're a solopreneur in the early days, just even that starting place, having mentors and having inform and people with informed decisions. Mm -hmm. uh, there's many of us entrepreneurs when we get together. Matter of fact, we were talking about this a couple of weeks ago. Um, very few of us have friends and family that start or run businesses. So they really don't have yes. a who we are or what we do. Yeah. They have a lot of opinions, but they're not informed opinions. <laughs> I was just going to ask you about this. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so yeah. So, right. You got to keep them, th those people out, right? You have to be, I, what I've learned is they, obviously we don't want to alienate them, but you, you do have to keep them out of. <laughs> opinions and counsel and everything else because they they want to help it, the average person you ask them for their opinion they're not just trying to be know-it-alls you've asked so they want to be helpful so they're going to rustle up some kind of an opinion and so you do you kind of have to kind of put a barrier and one of the ways that we've dealt with that is we just have learned not to vent and bring up pains or challenges in business and we kind of and we learned this the hard way <laughs> But you go, okay, there's boundaries to the conversation. And if I'm going to be a mature person, I don't have to say everything that's going on inside of me to every person I know that loves me. And then they're not, they don't feel like they need to give you an opinion. And then find those people, those two, three people, maybe four or five, if you're fortunate, that have experience, then you can sit down with them going, yeah, the shit just hit the fan. <laughs> and, and I don't know what to do. And they actually ask you some intelligent questions and give you some intelligent input. Yeah. Yeah. I think that that is so important. I'm going to take a quick sponsor break. So then I, it, you know, it's done and we can continue the conversation. So hang tight. For okay. a minute. So the Accelerate Your Business Growth podcast is happy to be sponsored by audible.com. I am convinced that you probably know that audible.com has thousands of audiobook titles to choose from, but what you might not know is all the other content that is there. There are podcasts, audible originals, guided meditations, news, they're broken down by interest, you know, area of interest, genre, you name it, and they're all there in the same place. So you don't have to go from one platform to another to get the um, audio content that you're looking for. So go sign up for the trial. You can go to audibletrial.com slash business growth. Sign up for that free trial of audible.com and then explore for yourself. Find out what's there. I think you're going to be pleasantly surprised. And just the time saver alone it is really um, a big reason to, to check it out. Interested in getting some help with your sales strategy? Pick up a copy of Succeed Without Selling on Amazon and wherever books are sold. Today we're speaking with Catherine and Michael Redman about how to build a business with passion and provision. So you mentioned, you guys mentioned before the break about this holistic model for building and running a successful business. And, and I believe, you know, we've touched on some of these core competencies. Um, I'd like you to, you know, talk about the model and, and why it works, but, but as you do it, like, I want to make sure people understand what you mean by a holistic model. Yeah, it's a good, good that's a great question. question. Yeah. Thanks for asking that one. Cause so often it doesn't happen. So a model, there's a, an old saying that we use it's difficult for us to learn a pattern until we see a pattern. It's difficult to learn a thing until we've seen a thing. Yeah, so, most adults, it's said in, in counseling and psychology, so most adults can't find a or their way until they see a way. That's it. That's the That's same. even more cool. than I would I just, say. I, I cool. needed to help him make that actually. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I'm here. I'm here to help. Okay. So we're having better, said that. We're better together. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> so when we, humility is a really important part of a partnership. <laughs> so and yeah, it's also a leadership <laughs> competency, but you know, whatever. <laughs> yeah. So, so when you're, when you're, when you're thinking about a model, you want to find a way a model is it, all a model is, is a system in which it includes all the important parts so that you can use it as a checklist. You can look at it. So a business model is basically, if nothing else, a short list of characteristics or things that are really important for you to pay attention to. Our model is six parts. It's six because we want to keep it simple. Those are the core pieces of a business. And when you come to those six with your business model, you have to have a mindset, uh, a, a goal. And for us, as you've talked about, as you were talking about the book, passion and provision is important. There are some people who go, you know, work is work's just work. I work for the weekend. I work for the evening. I work for my hobbies. My goal is to work and make enough money so that I can retire and do all the playing I want. Well, we believe that there's a couple of things that come to this passion provision thing that you, you have to bring in. And one of them is, I think work should be actually fulfilling. I think work should actually be beneficial to everybody around. And it should allow me to, to make my contribution in the world. And then very few people actually hit the lottery and can retire. And those that do amazing amount of them get bored. So they'll start looking for something to do anyway. Mm -hmm. So if you come to this, this process of building a business with that intention, you need a model that's going to cover all the things that make you profitable and competent, but also allow you to build this thing that is enjoyable and allows you to use your purpose to, to better the world. Well, and we talk about it being holistic. We use that word because when you're thinking about a holistic system, you're acknowledging that every part affects other parts, right? That if you oh, have absolutely. a part that is completely out of whack, it's kind of like having a spoke gone on your wheel. You're, you're not going to roll <laughs> forward very well. So, so we're arguing that, um, that the holistic thinking is really what you have to do to be successful in any business because you're actually taking into account all of the moving parts and realizing that everything affects everything else. So, you know, obviously it's not, it's not hard to connect some dots and your know, money obviously affects everything. Um, but vision affects everything. In fact, vision's in the center of our um, little wheel that we do because vision is that thing that allows you to know what you're doing, why you're doing it and why anyone is going to care and how ultimately um, you change the, the, the world, whatever your little part of the world is, through completing what it is you're trying to achieve as a team. And, and calling people back to that and helping them see their purpose and meaning is really, really critical as you, um, as you move forward. And, you know, culture and leadership, and there's all these moving parts, but, but that holistic concept is that idea that you have to be, you have to be cognizant that every part affects other parts. So you have to keep them all. Yeah, we, we talk about you need a, what we would call a working competence, a minimum competence in all of the core areas of business. Even if you've got people who are specialists doing pieces and parts for you, you still need to have a really good working knowledge of those parts so that you can um, keep the machine moving forward really efficiently. I see. Thank you both for, for that. that. That is tremendously helpful. Uh, for me and, and then I'm sure for the listeners to see that and I think it's important for them to hear that the different parts impact each other because when you were talking at, at the beginning of the episode about um, you know so many business owners like avoid the financial part well they have to understand that 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 part has a direct impact on all the others as do all the others right so that that I think is is a critically important way for that for any business owner to be looking at um, their their operations. So, um, can I say one more thing? That sure. just came to mind? the other the other reason that we're um, that we wrote the book the way that we did is that we also realized that what ends up happening for a lot of businesses is essentially you problem solve as different things arise. It's like, have you ever seen the game whack-a-mole? Yeah. <laughs> You're just waiting for the next thing to pop up. And so what happens is you end up getting like, I've got a, a marketing problem. And so you're like, I'm going to bring in a marketing consultant. So a marketing consultant comes in and gives you the 15 things you need to do to fix your marketing. But as it turns out, they are, you're pouring leads into a leaky bucket because 
the on the back end your culture sucks and what you're telling people they're going to get they're not getting so all of these you know you get all of these perspectives of the ways that you could grow your business but if you're not thinking about the bigger picture and, and being holistic about it it's hard for those um, initiatives to succeed right and then if, right. You're not, if you're not getting input from someone who understands that the grid that you have is this concept of you know i want to run a business that's fulfilling for me fulfilling for my people that um you know these are the values we're doing that that you know we're abiding by if you don't have those things laid out it's easy to get advice from someone who doesn't share those values and then they're giving you advice that's not nearly as helpful for your business as you move forward and and isn't that exhausting oh man <laughs> yes it is oh, terribly <laughs> Terribly exhausting. And it's like, you know, you get that callous, uh, entrepreneurs have a callous on the front of their forehead from beating against the brick wall that they're trying to go through today. And, you know, you just get frustrated. It is so tiring. And you're like, will anybody ever listen to me? Sometimes uh, the biggest challenge is we haven't grown as leaders. And that's really the next big thing that the, the, the last thing that we talk about after a model is once you know that there's a vision and a model that you have and you understand that, then you've got to grow, be committed to growing as a leader and you work on the inner game and the outer game. And that allows you to work on those competencies in the model. And that allows you to, to realize where you need to change your behavior so it's less exhausting. Right. And, and from, you know, I keep coming around to, I think communication has so much to do with how successful a, a business owner ends up being um, because they can have all the clarity in the world, but if they're not sharing that mm -hmm. message effectively, it doesn't really matter. Yeah. Well, Absolutely. and then the mistake that most leaders make of being kind of like the person who gets married and says, I love you. And 10 years later, you know, they haven't said it again. Um, well, I didn't take yeah. it that assumption that if I've said it once, I've communicated it once that somehow people have gotten in. So what does it look like to actually right. have enough communication, repetition, all that kind of stuff to actually um, shape kind of people's thinking and, and their understanding? And that takes some dedication. Patrick Lencioni says it really well. He says, and if you're going to communicate in the company, you're not communicating until you're over communicating. You have to over communicate at yeah. least from perspective so mm -hmm. that people can get it and communicate in multiple different ways. It's amazing how many people communicate in their favorite modalities. And then, you know, I like this or I like that. I'm, we have a huge library of books, but I'm a huge Audible fan and I have a huge Audible library. And I listen to way more books and Catherine reads books, which can quickly go. Catherine is much more word based, written, and she'll send things, read things faster, email out more. And I talk more and I get into more of an oral tradition. Well, both of them actually can be really helpful, but both of them can lead to right. a challenge or a weakness. And having an, an auditory uh, community where you're just instructing people and talking, man, it's really helpful to inspire them, but it's really bad for keeping things going on a regular <laughs> basis. Systems. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So absolutely, it's that whole idea you were talking about, about communicating and making sure there are just good attributes to that of just saying, let's, we got to make sure that the company understands not only where we're going long haul, yeah. what are the short-term goals and what are the things that need to get done so we can send a bill out and get paid? Well, and, and not only that, but the communication has to be two-way. It has to be you know, I, my opinion is that leaders really have to set up feedback loops so that everyone knows they're expected to communicate. Mm -hmm. Because I, you the know, leader isn't the only person who knows the answers. Yeah. The, I like, I'm gonna t that's one of the things I'm going to take away from today's conversation is you want to set, set it up so they have an expectation to talk because to, to share because right. so, so many employees, you know, it's, and it's easy as leaders you have great employees and they're like, we're just here to listen and we want to listen and we want to do what you're telling us to just tell us what to do. Mm -hmm. They don't realize there's an expectation that we want to hear back from them. Well, some of us. Well, do. we don't tell them. And some leaders don't want to hear back from people. The problem is it's sort of hard to get buy-in if you're always talking at people and you're not including them in the conversation. For sure. Yeah. Right. Well, 
which leads to one of the a great skill for a leader that you continue is a very tangible skill that we can grow in is learning to listen and we can count we can mm. count seconds we can count minutes that we're listening to our people and are we listening appropriately before we just spout off great answers of wisdom and are we helping people are we asking good questions when we talk yeah boy i mean that that's a really good question i i mean i find most people um don't listen intentionally they listen passively i guess i would say I yeah, know. I think yeah. you're right. Or they're, if they're in a culture that has funky expectations, they're, they may listen, but they're, as they're listening, they're trying to formulate their next answer, their next, right. Answer, right. Which makes it very hard to fully take in what's being said to you. If you're just trying to figure out how to, how to be smarter, <laughs> how to say <laughs> the next right thing. <laughs> so, right. Yeah. And you have to do a lot of coaching when, when you're learning to listen and change your, your thought process, because there's a whole lot of stuff going on inside the head when you haven't learned to be a good listener and it doesn't happen overnight. There are skills to be, I mean, I want to encourage leaders that are listening. If you, if that's tough for you, you can learn some really practical skills in those things and read about them in books and everything else, but it really requires some coaching and encouraging and then give yourself some patience. If you're legitimately working towards it, it's going to take a, it's going to take a long time to adapt those new ideas and behaviors and, thought patterns right you have to be right. commit to the long game because if it doesn't change in in 30 days or 28 days when somebody says a pattern's supposed to be changed <laughs> you get frustrated you give up on it or or just wore out and you move on to what's easier and right. don't give up one of my favorite questions to ask myself um when it comes to this kind of learning to listen is the question why am i talking right now Mm. you know am i talking because there's something really important i'm offering am i talking because i'm nervous am i talking because i feel like i don't want you to think that i don't know something why am i talking that's a great question you're on a podcast you're <laughs> Well, and if you if you think about it diane that acronym's out to that acronym's out to wait why am i talking wait did you just make that up did you just discover no, that? No, I'm pretty sure that I learned that from a mentor. And wow. I just, I just pulled it out of some recess. Wow. Of but no, that, so yeah, That's that good. weight. I like that. The weight out. I do too. Am I talking? Mic drop. Right Mic <laughs> okay, we're done. No, I'm kidding. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Go buy Audible. <laughs> right, exactly. That's right. Oh my gosh. I, I, I love that. So talk to me some about um, the definition of success. I, I'm really curious about what you guys think um, is how people determine what you know what success looks like. Okay, I want to. I want to. I'm going to start. I want to okay. say that we along through life it's for us, it's very clear that a success means that it's not just about money. Second success means that if I'm being successful, I'm succeeding at making my best contribution in life. I think in a business model, it's like, okay, the company can be financially great, but is it, is it checking the financial checkbox is not the only checkbox. Yeah. So, you know, the, the easiest way to illustrate this, Diane, is how many, um, how many marriages have been in, just completely exploded because the person building their business chased the money and sacrificed their relationships. So by the time, you know, we, we heard the story once, it just was heartbreaking, but this, this guy was like, yeah, I told my wife, I like, just, I just need like two years to just give everything I have to this business. And then, and then it's going to be great. And then we're going to be able to do whatever we want. And he did, and he made it incredibly financially profitable, but, but at the end of two years, he didn't have a wife. And, and so, you know, those kinds wow. of things, you destroy your, you know, you're, you're not going to the kids' soccer games, you're not involved. So all of those stories that, 
that we hear, that we see on TV, they're not, they're, they're important anecdotes because we can, mm -hmm. we can succeed financially yeah. and destroy relationships. And then you die rich and lonely. And that's pretty sad. Um, so. Right. so for Catherine, and I, it, I think one of the things to speak to this is our definition of work. Like what's interesting with work for us over the years, we started digging in deeper and we realized there for us, there's two different categories of work. There's a labor and there's toil. And if you think about these words, let's define labor as work that has, uh, it may be hard, it may be difficult. You may sweat really hard. You may give a lot of hours, but at the end of the day, you feel like I put in a good day's work and there's benefit and value, not only fruit that comes from that, but uh, a something that makes the world a better place. It's improving everything. Then there's toil. Toils, I filled up, I dug a hole and I came back the next day and somebody had filled it in and they just kept telling me to dig the same hole. And a great illustration was the, the difference between those is producing, but also purpose and meaning. There's this story of these two men and they're, they're both at this giant sand pile and they've just been told to fill up these bags and make sandbags. And their goal day in and day out right now is just to make sandbags and hour after hour goes by. And one of them is becoming absolutely miserable because this is a pointless, useless, no value at all task. He doesn't use his gifts. It doesn't use his skills. It doesn't use his mind. He's bored. The other person right next to him is having no problem at all. But the difference is that person understands that there's a flood happening and they're doing everything they can to save the city and they need to make more sandbags. Now doing something mundane doesn't matter anymore. It has purpose and meaning. One person is toiling because they don't understand the context and meaning. Right. The other person is, is laboring. And for us, success in work is when that company is you, giving you the chance to profit is something that has to happen and it should happen. And it allows you to, to meet the needs of today and build for the dreams of tomorrow. But when it's all said and done, you want to have something that allows you to have labor and fulfillment and in the midst of that you can see a true holistic success and and again i come back we come back to that word holistic don't get don't get yeah. one little area of life where you lose so much and we don't we don't want to lose it and we've we've fought and figured out and that's one of the things that we have we've we've done and demonstrated we can do but we continue to make sure that we don't take it for granted we've been in business 18 years We've built two six-figure, seven-figure companies. We're still growing. We've been in, we've been married for 27 years. Yes, almost 28. He said 18 on the last podcast. And I was like, nope, that's our business, not our marriage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's great. <laughs> so eight, been business 18 years together. That was your other wife, man. <laughs> yeah. And we're super happy. I mean, we are extremely happy, better off and more mature and more enjoyable and enjoying more than when we started. And then we have a 25 year old daughter who we have an excellent relationship with who said she would never work for the company. And then all of a sudden realized when she graduated from college that this wasn't a bad gig and <laughs> works for us in the company with the rest of our employees. That's a win, win, win for us. Yeah. That, that's success. Okay. So, so one of the things that I heard in there that I think is really important to uh, point out is that holistic, okay, so there's this holistic model for the business that business owners really need to make sure that they are, that, that their viewpoint is holistic as far as their entire universe, mm -hmm. right? That's so it's not awesome. just the business. Yeah. Okay. Because so, you just go wherever you go, right? Yeah. I mean, wherever you go, there you are. And you're just <laughs> the universe. Yeah. I mean, but you can't, if, when we get into this false thinking, it's, it's just wrong thinking. We need to change our mindset when we think this is one part of my life and this is another part in this part. There's yeah. health separation. I'm not saying there's not, I mean, that would be dumb. I think if I said that, but, but the reality is, is you're going everywhere and coming everywhere and life just kind of it doesn't neatly separate like that. And there's tons of cultures throughout history that have done quite well and realized that. And, and so, yes, you are wherever you go and that holistic perspective is important in your life. Yeah. Right. 
Okay, so so I mentioned um, at the beginning that your the title of your book is fulfilled. So, to explain why you picked that, I think I know, but explain why that's the title and what you hope people get. Yeah, you might have a guess. Yeah, so I mean, we we chose fulfilled basically because it it describes pretty perfectly what it is that we have experienced in our own business as we have done the entrepreneurial journey and um, and really sort of refined and learned from the mistakes and kind of built this business and our other business too. And the fact of the matter is, you know, in today's world, as a friend of ours said, who doesn't need a little more fulfillment? I mean, so part of it was, you know, we had started, our working title used to be passion and provision. And then we realized nobody understands what that is. So <laughs> we need to make that somehow subtitled and, and really make a title that would draw people in like, okay, what is, what is it to be fulfilled in business? What is it to be fulfilled as an entrepreneur, as a business leader, as a human being? Um, and all of these concepts of, you know, yes, you need a holistic model, but then these concepts of going after both passion and provision, going after, you know, understanding the difference between labor and toil, and really the grid that you're building your business on is this is this overarching sense of when I get done at the end of, of, the, of my life, um, you know, am I going to look back and not regret, um, you know, the things that I chose along the way? Right. And when we do this, I mean, we're looking at the idea that to tag on to the last, last point we were talking about, you know, that holistic, we start businesses, I'm not just so we can be personally fulfilled at work and do our labor and everything else. We start businesses as entrepreneurs and, and small business people, because we want more we want more ability to meet the needs and take care take care of the needs of us and our family. We really do. I think most entrepreneurs just start out with, I want to, I want to have a better chance of really taking care of my kids and and my wife or my husband and 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 maybe my parents when they're older, maybe preparing so when we're older, we're not a burden on our kids, and maybe sending my kids to a better college, or for that matter, maybe college at all when I didn't get the chance. We want to. We really want to do that. And so we want the money, but then we want the time to enjoy it. So there's got to be that place in there where fulfilled the business also allows us not to think about business. Cause I think this is, this is huge, hugely important. We want a successful business that allows us to have labor, not toil and to be financially profitable and growing because we spend so much time there, but the business when it's really fulfilling and really successful we're able to have a fulfilling life everywhere else in our lives without thinking about the business. Oh, that, that, yeah. Oh, that's key. Like you can actually take a vacation and unplug and, and not be haunted what? every night right? in your dreams. <laughs> right. I mean, that, that's a, that's a pretty big deal, right? Yeah. You, you can take the yeah. time to go and enjoy the things that, that your kids are doing because you're not so freaked out or panicking yeah. or, or you have built a business where you have to be in the middle of it all the time and nobody can function without you. Right. That's a function of leadership and right. not systems and, you know, and, and you're scared to leave it. Right. So um, we, we want you to own your business. We don't want your business to own you. Yeah. Yeah. And wow. It's, it's a beautiful thing when those things happen. And so I was talking with, with somebody the other day and this whole metaphor of you can have your cake and eat it too. And so often, you know, it's just difficult. We talk about, you, you can't have price, speed, and quality all at the same time, pick two. And we have all these little sayings in business right. and stuff like that, but you really can't there. The question that's lingering in so many leaders minds that we talk to is, okay, that was the dream, but I've been at this a while. Is the dream really possible? And what we have done is said, yeah, I mean, as a running a consulting firm over the last 18 years and doing marketing for people and really having a lot of these leader conversations, we finally came out, wrote the book and said, yeah, not only do we want to encourage you and tell you it's possible because we've done it. And we have a community of people around that we know that have done it mm -hmm. and been successful. So it's possible. So we want to just give them hope and encourage them but hope without a way to get there didn't yeah. seem like it was going to be the best for us. So we wrote out the plan and we brought down, we distilled years of business wisdom and the, 
and the experience we had and the lessons we've learned and the things that people have been talking about business for years and just said, here's a doable plan and here's a doable way to have this thing that we call a passion provision company that gives you literally more profit, more purpose, and leaves the legacy you want to leave. Yeah, a dear friend of ours said that um, that read the book, who wasn't a dear friend before she read the book, and has become since, and basically said it's kind of it's kind of like a mini MBA for entrepreneurs, where it really does cover the nice. big, the big picture of the practical things you really need to get your arms around, um, but but in a yeah. in a very um, wrapped in a relational way that gives yeah. you hope that it's possible. Yeah. So we really want. Okay. Now, so now you got to tell everyone how they can get it because (laughs) I think that's what's on everybody's mind right about now and how they can find you. Yeah. So the book, the easiest way to get to the book is (laughs) fulfilledthebook.com. So that's easy. Fulfilled. You can get, uh, we have the book discounted there 50%, uh, and you can get some extra bonuses that are really cool. And then you can contact us to find out more about us. It's also available on Amazon and (laughs) audible.com. Yep. You can actually listen to us. We read our own book. So if if you just love the sound of our voice, buy the audible version. If you don't, please avoid it. (laughs) Buy the, buy the print. (laughs) (laughs) Buy the book. Right. That favor. Right. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that's great. I, I so appreciate you guys spending time with me and, and sharing this information. I think it's really, really valuable. And, uh, and, and people can, uh, one of the things I really heard you say is that it, you can do this at any point in your business. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, we've worked with folks who have been in business 30 years, but, but really needed to get back to some of the fundamentals that we laid out in the book, right? Like, they aren't actually communicating their vision at all. They can't even articulate what it is. They don't really know their values. Um, you know, they don't, they've never codified things. And that's one of the biggest things is a lot of business owners and business leaders, you know, they grow up in these companies and it's like 15, 20, 25 years in, and there's certain key things that have never been codified. And as soon as they codify them, mm. it gives them this incredible boost that allows them to to grow their business and become more profitable. And that's really fun to see. Even if they were doing it well and doing it um, intuitively, it's amazing how much they light up and how much energy it gives them to push forward to be able to take something that they've been able to do and kind of get, but not been able to talk about with other people because they didn't have the words. Yeah. They finally have the words. And it's just it sounds so simple to say it's so profound. We've watched it change so many people's lives, including our own over the years. Sure. It's energizing, yeah. right? That creates enthusiasm. I, I can feel that when you were talking about it, I could actually feel what that must be like. Mm. Yeah. It's fun. So, yeah. Nice job. Well, thank you. As I said, I mean, thank you so much. And, and listener now, thank you so, so much. Can go to fulfilled the book. Um, and then there's contact information there for you guys as well, or should they go someplace else for that? No, uh, real efficient. They can go to fulfillthebook.com and they should be able to find anything they need. I'll, if there is another place they would like to go, halfabubbleout.com. It's all spelled out, halfabubbleout.com. We don't think like the other guy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, great. <laughs> well, thank you for spending this time with us. I, I appreciate it. And listeners, I appreciate you as well, as well as our sponsor. Uh, you know, go to audibletrial.com slash business growth, sign up for the trial, and then go listen to Fulfilled. Okay? It's so easy. Boom. Uh, exactly. Right. right? <laughs> Just amazing. One assignment. Uh, and, uh, and, you know, then... Get your sales strategy headed in the right direction by going to Amazon or anywhere books are sold and picking up Succeed Without Selling. As always, continue to prosper and be curious. And until we meet again on another episode of Accelerate Your Business Growth, goodbye and good day. Whether you're buying a new car or used one, it's a big investment, which is why you should choose Pennzoil Platinum. It helps extend the life of your engine and protect it up to 15 years or 500,000 miles, whichever comes first, guaranteed. 
That's because Pennzoil's base oil is made from natural gas and 99.5% free from engine clogging impurities. The proof is in the Pennzoil. Enrollment required. Keep your receipts. Other conditions apply. See Pennzoil.com slash warranty for full details. Find it at Firestone Complete Auto Care. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. Oh, that's a cheer we used to do in softball. Uh, what? It's, uh, actually Geico. Whenever someone hit a triple, we would wave our bats and yell, 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. But we never got to use it because we would only hit home runs. Annoying. The phrase is from Geico because they help save people money? Geico? Yeah, they were our team sponsor. Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. Imagine how fast we could solve the world's biggest problems if more SaaS startups would gain traction sooner. Welcome to the Tech Entrepreneur on a Mission podcast. This podcast is dedicated to sharing experiences from B2B SaaS CEOs who are going above and beyond to deliver change that is noticed. You will hear their secrets and learn what is required to build a SaaS business that the world starts talking about and keeps talking about and how to overcome the roadblocks to do so.